Okay, we're starting a whole new book in the Bible, 1 Peter. 1 Peter. It's five chapters long. It's only four pages, though. First Peter. We just finished the book of James. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Just put your name there. Are you an apostle of Jesus Christ? What is an apostle? Someone who tells others about Jesus to the best of their ability. That's it. In its simplest form. Someone who repeats the scriptures to save other people. That's an apostle or a disciple. To God's elect. Well, not to sound funny, but the janitor is just the janitor, unless he also does the apostle work. But you don't have to be an apostle is what I'm saying. You can be a believer in Jesus Christ and be the janitor or the dishwasher. And I do not by any means make think those jobs are stupid because I have done both of those jobs for many years in my life. And I learned to enjoy those jobs. But an apostle, you're probably not going to see them, you know. Well, even Peter and John said, we need to appoint people to wait on tables. We should not um, use our skills given to us by God to wait on tables. Because it was taking all their time. Jesus did not call them to be waiters or janitors or dishwashers. He had a different purpose for them. However, you can be a dishwasher and be apostle of Jesus Christ within the group that you are surrounded by. To God's elect, he's talking God's elect. Remember, this is Peter who walked with Jesus. I'm not trying to give him more credit than the others. I only give Jesus Christ credit. Peter didn't die on the cross, no. Just like me, I never. To God's elect, the believers, exiles scattered throughout the province of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. That speaks of predestination. God either chose you to become a Christian or he rejected you and that is a false way of thinking. Because some people read that and they say, now, this is a very important teaching. They say, well, I'm either a believer or I'm not. So it's all God's fault. If I go to hell, well, that's what God chose for me. If I go to heaven, that's what God chose because our names were of the saved were written in the book of life before the foundation of the earth. That part is true. Your names were. You, but in order for that theory, that false theory, F-A-L-S-E, false theory, to be correct, you have to um, have no free will given to you by God. The same God cannot say, I'm going to choose who's saved and who's not, and I'm also going to give them free will to decide if they want to be saved or not. Can't do it. God cannot go against himself. Think about it. We all have 
There is no such thing as predestination for salvation. It does not exist. It's something that lazy sluggards, non-believers use, just one of those stupid arguments like about, we all sit around and argue about the dinosaurs. I'll make you laugh. Yesterday, on the news, I heard a report, national news, that due to, I'm not making these numbers up. I told my wife this morning, she started laughing. They said, in 12 billion years, because of climate change today, these people believe the earth is billions and billions of years old. In 12 billion years from today, man is going to become extinct. Oh, they got charts and everything. They Oh, they go at it. They got all kinds of charts and um, they got proof and they take samples of ice. Blah, 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 blah. They actually said, now, that's funny because the White House says in 12 years, we're going to become extinct if we don't spend trillions on climate change. So these guys came along and said, in 12 trillion years, our 12 billion years, we're going to become extinct. And my first thought was, oh, so you're saying we're all going to be here 12 billion years from now that climate change never destroyed the earth by 2050? <laughs> they are going against the word of God. So what is foreknowledge? God knows ahead of time because of his perfection. Look at this ship coming in here. God knows because of his perfection who is going to be saved and who is going to, who is going to say yes to Jesus and who is going to reject Jesus. God cannot not know. He has to know everything because of his perfection. And what's more amazing than that is God took the time and patience to save my soul. But he took the time and patience and tried to save everyone's soul. But in today's society, 75% of the people will say no. And only 2 billion people will really be saved out of this. Or maybe 1.5 billion people will be raptured and another 500 million will come out of the tribulation for Christ. That'd be 2 billion right there. There is no such thing as predestination, but there is something that God has foreknowledge of all things. God can tell you what's going to happen tomorrow, yes. That's why you need God, because you can't tell yourself what's going to happen tomorrow. That's why the devil has psychics, horoscope readers, palm readers, you know, sex therapists to tell you for just, you know, 150 bucks, man, I can tell you what's going to happen this next three months in your life. By the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Are you obedient to Jesus Christ? Or are you sprinkled with the blood of Christ? It's the only way to be saved. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through this resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So you want to know what that means? Just read it backwards. Through the resurrection of Christ, we have new hope, eternal life, and we've been given a new birth through forgiveness of sins. New life. Just read it backwards and it just tells you one, two, three. And into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. No moth, no rust, no mold, no tears, no anger, 
We are inheriting something that is eternal. Paradise. It can never go away. And nothing will ever be able to touch it. But of course, hell is eternal also. They are not inheriting it. No, they have chosen it. For God so loved the world, God wishes none to be lost. It's right in the Bible. So if God wishes for none to be lost, then how come over 50% are lost and go to hell? It says God wishes for none to be lost, but these people rejected God with their free will, and they sent themselves into hell. God did not send them there. They sent themselves there by rejecting God. Well, what about God? You know, maybe if we all just get up into heaven and sing Kumbaya and hold hands, then we'll all be saved. That didn't work for the devil. The devil and one third of the angels saw God's face. They were in heaven and they still rejected him. There's, some, there's people on this earth that are going to reject the offer of Jesus Christ no matter what you tell them. Even if Jesus dies on a cross for their sins, they will still reject him. So it's not predestination, no. It's pride. They want to be their own boss. They want to be their own God, just like Satan came against God. If I get rid of God, then I can be God. But he didn't realize God did him a favor by casting him out of heaven because out of the presence of God. Because if you kill the creator, God, the creation dies one second later. So if Satan would have somehow killed, overpowered and killed God the Father, then he would have disappeared also. Because he only existed by God's gift of life. And if God is not pouring the gift out, his spirit, you cannot remain alive. You will die. Without God, it's like the lamp will not work if it's not plugged into the electricity or a battery or something. If you unplug the lamp from the wall, it will not work. If you unplug your life from God's outlet, you're done. Praise be to God, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Do you know you have an entire storehouse in heaven of things God wants you to have when you get to heaven? Your inheritance is being kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time or times. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, because we read in the previous book, your life is but a mist, in all this you greatly rejoice about what you have in heaven, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that you so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold. Your faith is worth more than gold which perishes, even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Do you believe that you have a house and a kingdom, a small little kingdom with Christ in, in, um, in your name? Only you can have it in heaven. Every believer is going to be receiving multiple, multiple eternal gifts and blessings. And it's just waiting there for you. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. I must leave. If I don't go, then I can't prepare a place for you. That's why I'm going, he told the disciples. I'm going to prepare a place for you for when you arrive. Oh, and it's going to be a, a place made by heavenly spiritual hands. And it is going to be incredible. 
And you don't get to enjoy it for a hundred years, a thousand years, ten thousand years. You get to enjoy all of it for all eternity. It will be yours forever. No one, not even God, will take it away from you. <laughs> this inheritance is kept for you in heaven who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is re ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief of all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an expressible, inexpressible, and glorious joy. You know, doubting Thomas, Jesus appeared in front of Thomas, and Thomas said, I now believe. And Jesus says, you believe because you have seen. Blessed are those who have not seen me and will still believe. That's what it's going through here. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And it's saying what could be more valuable than the salvation of your soul entering the kingdom of God for all eternity? It kind of makes your earthly problems seem small. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. I told you, I keep it simple. The entire Bible is about Jesus Christ. Page one till the last page, it's all about Jesus. Your Savior. Or the one who will judge you and send you to hell because you rejected him. It was revealed to them that they are not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that they have now been told, told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. There's the verse I speak of a few times. Even angels are longing to look into what God has planned for all of us. Oh, it is, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, do not get drunk. The Lord hates it when you get drunk. With minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. The Battle of Armageddon, Jesus comes down, wipes them out. A new heaven and a new earth, a new Jerusalem, and he will reign the earth for 1,000 years. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance before you are saved. You know, ignorance is a nice word, a nice way to say, well, you really didn't know what you were talking about before Jesus. But I'm saying in the last days here, people cannot claim ignorance because they willfully, they fully want to reject Jesus Christ. They're doing it on purpose. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. He's talking to the believers here. Peter is talking to believers. Believers, 
Your God is holy, so start living holy lives. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially. You know, you're not going to be judged by a group. You are not going to be judged in a group setting. You are going to be judged. You're not going to be judged with your wife or your children. That may be part of your judgment, the way you treated them. But you, this is the worst thing for those who are going to hell and perishing. You are being judged solely on every action you took since the day you were born until the day you died. But you can only go to hell by rejecting Christ. I didn't want you to get confused about that. Since you call on a father, see, he's talking to believers. He's assuming he's talking to people who are already saved. You're still going to be judged on your works. What did you do after your salvation? Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as forgiveness... No, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. Live out your time on earth like you were a foreigner. That's not something Americans do. Americans think we're the greatest people who have ever lived. And when we, when we go to a foreign country, we demand that the title of American be highly respected. And if, and if we even get a hangnail, we demand that the entire military of the federal government comes and rescues us in a foreign country. Or we demand that the President of the United States, you know, trade oil and billions of dollars to get someone out of a certain country. Even if that person was breaking the law, we don't care because we are an American. We have this attitude that Americans are far superior than anyone else on the planet. It's mostly because of our stupid technology. We have only deceived ourselves. We are only here, what did it say? We are only here as foreigners on earth. This is, and we're supposed to be here in reverent fear. We're foreigners on this earth. The believers are in a foreign, unbelieving, sinful, despicable land where the people here, the people on this planet commit all kinds of sexual immoralities nonstop. You're not supposed to be down here rejoicing and going to cocktail parties. No. No. I'm just telling you how it is. For you know that it is not, it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed. You were not saved with money, gold, silver, rubies. You were not saved with things like that. Old wooden oak furniture. No one bought you with those things. You were paid for and bought by the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. We should live in reverent fear of our days on earth. Fear of God. You were redeemed from your empty way of life, handed down to you from your ancestors. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Christ had perfection. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. You know, go back to um, my ancestors gave me corruptible ways. I loved my parents dearly. I, I truly do. I, I miss them. I, I love them. 
but because of the advertising and the ways of the world. My mother swore that Tide detergent was the greatest soap ever made by mankind. <laughs> and when she found out when I worked at a dollar store and I proved to her the Dollar Tree soap, the awesome, the awesome brand works as good as like the big brand names. She took something home and tried it and she was like, I've wasted thousands of dollars on those other expensive soaps. Or, you know, in our corruptible ways, like I sit down as a five-year-old and my mother hands me, you know, a box of cereal, Fruity Pebbles. She's not doing this to harm me. She truly believes that because of false advertising that this cereal is good for me. Or she wouldn't have put it in front of me. Those are some corruptible ways that our ancestors before us have given us these false things. And they're pushed into you as a child. They're pushed into you as a child. And, you know, you believe them as an adult. And then the word of God comes in and slowly starts perishing those things, burning by fire those things out of your life, your thought process. Just like, you know, if any of you have ever melted gold or silver, you, I mean, you need in like 2,000 degrees or something, 2,200 degrees, and it's a slow process. You have to get everything corruptible out of that to make it pure. Well, that's what the Word of God is doing to your life once your ancestors have put all the false information into you <laughs> because they had their ancestors put all the false information into them. The best thing you can do is stop putting false information into your next children and teach them the word of God. Break. Break the, um, the lies, the habits of the lies. Nothing worse than people believing lies. They truly believe what they're hearing is true. Like the National Enquirer. Man, I grew up with that. And my mother would hold that up. She got that every week. She'd say, do you believe that um, Robert Redford is doing something on the National Enquirer this week? Whatever. Do you believe Robert Redford's actually doing that? And I was like, I'd always make jokes, say, well, why don't we just look him up and call him up at his house and ask him? My mom would say, oh, you couldn't, you can't just call up someone like that, David. <laughs> the National Enquirer did more work for the devil than any other magazine in the history of America. It did more harm than the Satanic Bible because most people, 1% of the people on earth read the Satanic Bible. I've never read it. I wouldn't touch it. But at one point, 80% of Americans read the National Enquirer. Why do I care who Tom Cruise marries? I don't care who Tom Cruise marries. I don't live with Tom Cruise. He's not in my circle of believing Christians. Why would I spend money to find out who Tom Cruise went out with last Saturday night? Tom Cruise or any um, person in Hollywood is under the same commandments as the word of God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other. Love one another deeply from the heart for you have been born again. Jesus told the te main teacher 
He said, what is truth? And Jesus says, you are Israel's teacher and you're asking me what is truth? And Jesus told him, you must be born again. And the man said, how can I enter back into my mother's womb and be born again? Jesus said, not of flesh, but of spirit. You must be born again in the spirit or you will never see eternal life. But technically, you read the whole Bible, you will see eternal life in hell. You, you live for all eternity. You will be alive in hell for all eternity. Love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God for, for, we're almost done, all people are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. You go back up here. He, Jesus, was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, so that your faith and hope are in God. And so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves through Christ by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart because you have been born again of the Spirit. That is 1 Peter chapter 1. 